we are so far down the rabbit hole that to just sort of stand at sea level and say Durham found nothing new, his two prosecutions failed, and the projections and hopes and dreams that Trump and his allies had were an absolute dud and a flop is actually viewed as a partisan statement when this is what is actually the hyperbole, the spin and the disinformation. Let me show you Fox's reaction. Yeah, it is outrageous that this happened. It is arguably worse than Watergate when you look at all the facts. It is astonishing to me. It is outrageous that here we are, seven years later, after they store four they stole four years of a presidency and they tried to undermine and overthrow democracy. There has been zero reform, zero accountability, zero consequence for the people who attempted this coup. What they need to do is this. They need to appoint a loyalist as FBI director, kind of the way that JFK appointed his brother to run the Justice Department. You either need a loyalist or you need some guy that you have so much dirt on that he wouldn't even try anything. We're now so far around the circle that they're advocating for corruption. And for the record, Christopher Wray was Chris Christie's former defense attorney, private defense attorney, who was handpicked by Donald Trump. Now that he hasn't been loyal to, to Donald Trump, I suppose, is the indictment. But he is Donald Trump's handpicked FBI director. Yeah, it's uh, the Republicans and the far right are completely spinning off the planet. But this is much worse than just simply uh, he didn't find anything. Um, the reporting that Charlie and others did uh, uh, six months ago or so, <coughs> excuse me, um, really demonstrated that John Durham would, had morphed from a prosecutor into a political animal. You don't get prosecutors who resign very frequently, especially not under the outside of the Trump administration. Uh, that is really unusual, especially his number two. You don't get a special counsel going and trying to change an inspector general's report. And ultimately, what he found is not only that there was nothing there, but it actually justified what the FBI did, even though he completely, completely misconstrued the facts on the ground. Now, he said that this is a preliminary investigation would have been legitimate to start Operation Crossfire Hurricane. Let's remember how this started. This didn't start in April of 2016 when the Australian diplomat heard from George Papadopoulos that uh, Russia had emails and they were going to drop them. It started after Russia did it. And then all of a sudden, the Australian diplomat was like, wait a minute, I, the Trump campaign had advanced notice of that. I got information that this relates to Russia. The corroboration that John Durham says doesn't exist in the investigative files and the intelligence files existed in plain sight, and yet he doesn't talk about that. That is a complete abdication of his responsibility. The other thing is he goes on and on and on about the Steele dossier. The Steele dossier had nothing to do with the origination of the investigation, and it had nothing to do with the Mueller report or the numerous prosecutions and convictions brought by special counsel Mueller. So what this really is, is it is a political hatchet job by a political animal dressed up in a prosecutor's clothes. And that is the most dangerous of all because he has a veneer of apoliticism them, even though he is clearly a political animal. And even with that, the Republicans are off the reservation. Nothing that they're saying is included in his report. So this is disinformation beyond disinformation. Even Republican Ben Klein said today that this was proof that uh, the FBI interfered in the election in support of Hillary Clinton and against Donald Trump in 2016. How can that happen if it never went public? Nothing public ever came out about that investigation. So how could it actually interfere? This is really, really scary stuff coming from the right wing. Well, and Dan Goldman, I, Congressman Goldman, I want to ask you, you know, with Trump as a candidate for office in 2024, <laughs> you, you, you know, the, the, the investigation isn't opened into Trump initially. It turns into an investigation also looking at Trump after he fires Comey and the obstruction of the investigation. The question is on the table whether or not doing the work, work that would make Vladimir Putin happy, is also 
part of a national security question. I mean, Trump very prominently last week towed Vladimir Putin's line as someone largely seen to be a war criminal. I mean, he's a candidate for office in 2024 who still has a direct call and answer between Vladimir Putin. What happens to those questions when you have one of the country's two political parties in government and out immune or, or in, enable to look at any questions about Trump's affinity for Putin? Right. I mean, let's remember, though, this didn't even originate as an investigation into Trump. It originated as a counterintelligence investigation into Russian efforts to interfere in the election. It morphed into an, inter inter uh, an investigation, rather, of the Trump campaign because evidence materialized that people like Paul Manafort were giving internal campaign data to a Russian intelligence agent who he had worked with. So that is also a very important predicate to this entire conversation. But we We've known of Donald Trump's favoritism toward Vladimir Putin since 2016 and, and thereafter. We've, we've seen it in Helsinki in 2018 when he uh, publicly chose to side with Vladimir Putin, who has openly expressed his antagonism toward the United States over our own intelligence community. This is very much baked in and what I think we all need to be focused on and calling out, and that includes Charlie and the New York Times and other uh, journalists is we need to be aggressively calling out the misinformation and disinformation that is coming from the right wing and that will unquestionably come from Donald Trump over the next 18 months as he uses this Durham report as part of his campaign. It needs to be called out by independent journalists, objective journalists. Certainly, we will be banging the drum on Capitol Hill, but this is something that needs to be really uh, aggressively attacked. I mean, I, I, and I guess if you step back, Congressman, I mean, Manafort, Flynn, Stone, Gates, and Papadopoulos were all found guilty in, in the court of law. What, what, is, what is Durham saying, that they weren't really guilty of the crimes they confessed, pleaded to, or were convicted of? I have no idea what confirmation bias he's talking about when you have either guilty pleas or jury verdicts convicting all of these people in connection with the Russia investigation, and yet you have acquittals essentially across the board in the piddly cases that John Durham brought. You want to talk about a waste of time and money. The John Durham investigation is an embarrassment, and it should go down as one of the biggest abuses of power and waste of money in the Department of Justice's history. But there's no confirmation bias here. Special Counsel Mueller did an investigation and convicted people. They pled guilty or they were convicted at trial. So, and he established, as did the Inspector General, that the initial investigation was open justifiably. Durham doesn't even really quibble with that. He says it should have been preliminary, not a full investigation, which is, uh, for the, va the majority of lay people outside of the Department of Justice, a distinction without a difference. And so it is a, a, a real abomination. And the fact that he wastes 300 pages on this, including so much about the Steele dossier, uh, which the Inspector General had also addressed. Uh, is just goes to show how political this is. And it's almost as if the Republicans had their talking points written before the report came out and they ever saw it. They were going to say the same things no matter what was in the report. And it's a, a real shame that we have to deal with this. Congressman, you sit on the politicization committee. Would you like to see John Durham called? And what would you ask him? I would love to see John Durham called. I would love to ask John Durham about why his prosecutors quit. I would love to see uh, ask John Durham about his trips to Italy with Bill Barr to chase some phantom uh, in, uh, information that proved not to be true. But what came out of that was an additional tip about potential fraud by Donald Trump that, of course, Do John Durham did not investigate. I would love for John Durham to come in and ask him about his efforts to convince the independent inspector general to change his report. Um, I'd love to ask John Durham about the politicization of his investigation. So, yes, I'm on the weaponization of the federal government subcommittee that Jim Jordan is the chairman of. So let's bring John Durham in because he is the number one example of the weaponization of federal government. 
As a former prosecutor, Congressman, let me, let me ask you about Barr's embrace of, of Durham and how they traveled together and, and seemed to have engaged in some group think. Um, Barr writes this in his memoir. Um, in the spring and early summer of 2019, when John and I discussed the international dimensions of his work, we agreed to engage with three countries we felt would be most helpful to the investigation, the UK, Australia, and Italy. I traveled to both Italy and the UK to explain Durham's investigation and ask for any assistance or information they could provide. I alerted the president, Trump, that we would be making these contacts and asked him to mention Durham's investigation to the prime ministers of three countries, stressing the importance of their help. Is that normal? That is unbelievable to have an attorney general spending so much time on unverified tips uh, with foreign countries, traveling to the foreign countries. Doesn't he have better things to do? Aren't there real important issues that the Department of Justice needs to address rather than some fanciful tips that he wants to chase down with an, a special prosecutor um, whose investigation he should not even be involved with? It is truly a, a, a great example, Nicole, of the abuse of power that was littered through the Trump administration of cabinet officials trying to do the political bidding of Donald Trump. And the irony, of course, is that we have to sit through these uh, subcommittee hearings on the, quote, weaponization of the federal government that are being run by Republicans when the Trump administration weaponized the federal government more than any administration in the history of our country. And so so it is a really a gross abuse of power. It's a shame. But I look forward to asking Mr. Durham all about that, those conversations and those trips with Bill Barr.